Hey everyone, how's it going? Forrest here again with another installment of my complete analysis of all of JSBox Kraal harmonizations. Today we're looking at another harmonization of Ich dank dir, liebe Hella, which translates to I thank the Savior dearest. We looked at a very similar harmonization in yesterday's episode, so in today's analysis we're going to be skipping over a lot of the details that we covered in yesterday's episode, make sure to check out episode 340, which was a reanalysis of a crowd that I looked at in episode two, like way back at the beginning of the channel, totally by mistake. I just did not put in my notes that I had analyzed 347. Um, so I did it again unknowingly. Uh, so you can compare and contrast the two analyses. They both have valid points, interesting uh, uh, comparisons, because one was when I had very little experience with Bach and I was analyzing and looking for patterns that were uh, less commonplace in terms of my relationship that I had with the music. And then there was yesterday's episode where I've looked at the majority of Bach's chorales and uh, I had a different insight. So lots of similarities between today's chorale, yesterday's chorale. Let's hop right into the analysis. Um, two flats in the key signature. We start with B flat, we end with B flat. So I think the overall tonality is B flat major, even though our first cadence is a perfect authentic cadence in the key of F. Passing seventh in the bass, G, D, G, and B flat. That's a six chord G minor. Passing tone in the tenor, and then we have D, F, a flat and B, a bit of a variation here, where we have um, B flat seven in first inversion. That would be like a five six five of four, um, because B flat is the dominant of E flat. That's exactly where it goes to four E flat major, E flat, E flat, G, and B flat with a passing seventh of the tenor, uh, and then this is also where we go to the key of F. Um, at least in my opinion, this is one way we could analyze it. In this case, it's going to become our seven chord, E flat major being our subtonic seventh. Not a very common way that Bach uh, modulates between keys, but it's sort of just functioning as uh, the leg that sort of connects uh, B flat major and F um, because we get a dominant afterwards, and at that point I feel like we will have already modulated, especially because we have this interesting A flat here in the melody. Uh, we go to C major over E, E, C, G, and C, which is 5, 6 in the key of F, and then we go to F minor. This is the interesting sort of hallmark of this particular chorale. F, C, G, and A flat, this G being a 9 8 suspension over the bass, but this being our minor tonic. Whether we're in the key of F minor and we get a little bit of mode mixture in the form of borrowing that F major from the key of F major, or if we're borrowing F minor and E flat major from the key of F minor, there's definitely a bit of tonal ambiguity going on here. Afterwards, we get C, B flat, F, and G, this F being a 4-3 suspension over the bass, and E being our chord tone, this is a 5-7 chord, C7, and then we cadence on F major, F, A natural this time, F and F, which is uh, three roots and one third, or really two roots and one third, because the alto and the soprano are singing the same melody, but yeah, are we in F minor? Are we in F major? I think it is largely nebulous. We're sort of just in the key of F at this point, and I think that's pretty cool that there is that tonal ambiguity, that parallelism between the keys. Next phrase ends in a perfect authentic cadence in the key of F again. This time the phrase stays entirely in F. There really isn't um, much to mistake here. We go to F major over A, A, C, F, and C. That's just one six, no need to reiterate the Roman numeral. And then we go to B flat, B flat, B flat, F and D, with the passing seventh here in the tenor, that's our four chord, B flat major. Then we get C, G, E natural, and C, which is our five chord in root position. And that takes us to a bit of a deceptive progression. We get B flat major over D, which is like kind of like a six chord, but not because it has B flat rather than A. D, F, F, and B flat. 
So the bass movement and the lower voices look like a six chord, but the melody says otherwise. But for all intents and purposes, it is a, um, what's it called? A deceptive progression. After this, we get five again, E, C, C, and not A, but rather G, which is our five chord and first inversion. I don't think this is a 3-6 chord. 3-6 would have been a chord that we might expect between 4 and 4-6, four, but I don't think between 4-6 and 1. 5-6 takes us to 1. F, C, C, and A. Tonic triad, root position. We then have another 5 chord via this 4-3 suspension. C, B flat, E, and G. 5-7 more specifically. And then we cadence on F major. F, a, C, and F. Tonic triad, root position. Next phrase is in the key of B flat to start things off, but something that you'll notice is that this phrase is very similar, or I guess this these next two phrases are very similar to the first two phrases. In yesterday's crawl, we had a repeat here, but these two phrases are more or less identical, just some slight variations in terms of the bass movement here in the first phrase. So we start off with one like we did or we don't start off with one per se. We actually start off with five, because uh, F is also functioning like five here. We start off with one six. This is one of the differences in the bass. Uh, D, B flat, F, and B flat. We then go to E flat major rather than G minor. E flat, B flat, G, and B flat. So that's our four chord in root position. Passing tone here in the tenor before we get B flat, D, F and B flat, it's our tonic triad, and then we get E flat again, E flat, E flat, G, and B flat. So our four chord this time is still our gateway to the key of F, it is seven, passing seventh in the bass, or sorry, the tenor, before we get E natural, C, G, and C, it's our five chord and first inversion, and then we have F major, F, C, G, sorry, F minor, A flat, I was on autopilot there, our minor tonic still uh, bringing up the same conundrum from an, anal from an analyst's standpoint here. So we have the 9-8 suspension, then the 4-3 suspension, uh, C, B flat, E, and G, and then our perfect authentic cadence ends on F. F, A, F, and F. Next phrase is more or less identical to I'm just quickly glancing over. I think it's exactly identical, so I'm just going to breeze right through it because we've already looked. Ends in a perfect authentic cadence. We have 1 6 here, F major over A. We then have B flat major, root position that's our four chord, passing seventh in the tenor. Then we have C major again in root position that's our five chord. And then we get another deceptive progression. This is B flat major over D or 4 6. And then we get. Um, this accented non chord tone again, where we get C major in first inversion, uh, 5 6. That uh, resolves to 1, F major, tonic triad. And then we move to C major again via this 4 3 suspension, or, uh, C, B flat, E, and G. And then we cadence on F, F, A, C, and F. Tonic triad root position. Next phrase is in the key of B flat and ends in a half cadence. So this F major chord is our gateway to the key of B flat. It is our five chord. And then we move to B flat major over D, 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 B flat, and F. Tonic triad first inversion. Passing tones here in the inner voices. We have D, C, A, and F. Kind of like a passing three, seven chord here. Maybe I will mark that. Maybe it's happening, maybe it's not. Depends on how granular you're being with the analysis. All in all, it does take us to a four chord. One to three is an unusual progression, but three to four is semi-normative. It's like we see it with quite a bit of frequency. It's just uh, not amongst the most common chord progressions we see. But we have G, B flat, G, and E flat, which actually kind of looks like three going to six. But instead of going to 6, it goes to 4, 6. And like we discussed earlier, 5 going to 4, 6 is just a variation on the deceptive progression. 5 doesn't always have to go to 6. It can go to 4, 6 because the bass is very similar. 
we have a passing tone here in the tenor as well before we get B flat, D, F, and D. And something that I almost couldn't believe that I saw, and to me in this harmonization, this is the most interesting thing to me. If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know that four six to one progressions here um, in this ascending configuration always have a leading tone connecting the six and the one of the bass. Here we have a chorale where it doesn't, and I had to double and triple check this chorale with different versions. Lo and behold, we have an we have an uh, an instance in which a four six to one progression in this ascending configuration does not have the leading tone connecting the two chords. I think that's just super fascinating. Um, in between a B flat. And the next chord, we have E flat and G. So we have B flat, E flat, G, and uh, D, which is kind of like a 4-3 four, four, chord, E flat major 7. And that takes us to 5-4-2, uh, E flat, F, A, and C. F7, sorry, F7 over E flat. We would expect this to resolve to 1-6, which it kind of does, but beyond resolving to 1-6 because we have this passing A flat here. I feel like there's a higher function and I think that its function is a secondary dominant. It's the dominant of 4. So if the 5-4-2 chord is still resolving the way we would expect, but um, the chord's function is actually um, more detailed than just uh, resolving to a tonic. It's actually 5-6 uh, of 4 which is a roundabout way of saying 1-6, but because of this passing A flat, it feels much more connected to 4 than it does just feel like an isolated tonic that could just springboard into any old context. And it does go to 4, E flat, B flat, G, and... Uh, is that a B flat? Yeah, E flat, B flat, G, and B flat. It's our 4 chord, E flat major, root position, passing tone here in the melody. That takes us to our tonic, B flat, B flat, F, and D, and then we cadence on five. F, A, F, and C. Tonic triad, root position. Next phrase takes us to the key of C minor. Perfect authentic cadence in the key of C minor. And I do think this F is actually our gateway to the key of C minor, interestingly enough. I think it becomes our major subdominant as a byproduct of the melodic minor scale, where we have this connected melodic minor here, A natural, B natural, and C. We've seen this recently, and uh, it just feels like a natural connection point between uh, C minor and F major, which are otherwise distant keys, or, sorry, F major being the chord and C minor being the destination. We're moving from the key of B flat to C minor, which is not a distant modulation. So after four, we get D, B natural, F, and D, which is B diminished over D, that's seven, six, and then we get our tonic C minor, C, C, E flat, and E flat. Two roots and two thirds, which is an interesting spelling. Afterwards, we get F, C, A flat, and D. Yeah, A flat and D, which is two, six, five. And um, we would expect that to go to five, which it does. We have G, we have B natural, we have G, and we have D, G major in root position. And then we go to some interesting chord here where there's some room for debate. We have A flat, C, G and C. This could be an A flat 7 chord without the 5th, but I feel like this G is a 7 6 suspension over the bass. And this is actually 4 6 F uh, minor 7 over A flat. A bit of a deceptive progression, again, using this 4 6 chord. We've seen it earlier as well, which gives it some precedence and kind of strengthens this argument, but it could be a 6 7 chord too. 6 7 and 4 6, they're very similar to one another in terms of how they look. So 4 6 takes us to 5, B major, G. D, G, and B natural. It's our five chord. And then we cadence on uh, C minor. C, E flat, G, and C. And it's going to be our gateway back to the key of B flat, which is the last key we will see in this chorale. C minor also happens to be our two chord. And that takes us to five. More specifically, five, four, two. We have E flat, we have A, we have C, and we have F f7 over e flat and that would we would expect to take us to 1 6 which it does uh, d b flat f and b flat b flat major over d we then have a bit of an ambiguous chord we have c e flat 
G and C, which could be mistaken for a two chord, or maybe not mistaken, but analyzed as a two chord. I think this G is an accent and non chord tone. This is actually 7 6, A diminished over C. We see this pattern all the time in Bach, and it's just consistent with my analyses uh, that I've done in the past. But there are ways to, m multiple ways to analyze this. We have B flat, we have F, we have B flat, and we have D. And this is exactly how we would expect the pattern to resolve. 1, 6, 7, 6, 1. Very common traversal method Bach uses to move um, in stepwise motion in the bass. F is a chord tone, so we don't need to mark it. And then we have E flat, E flat, wait, C, E flat, A, and E flat. In the same way that we went down, we're seeing the same direction or the same pattern going up again. I feel like this G is an accent or passing seventh, I guess, in this context. And then we go to B flat over D, D, E flat, F, and F. This E flat being a 4 3 suspension over the bass, but 1 6 being our, uh, our implied chord here. That takes us to um, E flat, C, G, and E flat, which is C minor over E flat, which is not two diminished six, that is just two six, passing or just quartal seventh here in the um, in the tenor, and a passing tone in the melody before we have our perfect authentic cadence. No, oh, sorry, not a perfect authentic cadence. Apologies, it's a half cadence in the key of F major because we're or sorry in the key of B flat major. I'm, I was seeing an F major chord, I already made a mistake on the cadence, and my brain was not thinking about what the actual cadence is, which is a half cadence on a five chord. That's what a half cadence is. And our final cadence is a perfect authentic cadence. We start off with an interesting progression, another deceptive progression. We have G, B flat, B flat, and E flat, which is another four six chord, E flat major over G. And that takes us to an interesting chord actually. We have B flat 7 over F. We have F, B flat, A flat, and D, which is 5, 4, 3 of 4. We would expect this to resolve to uh, E flat, but it doesn't quite resolve to E flat. It resolves to C minor 7 over E flat, E flat, B flat, G, and C. Which is two six five, so this is a deceptive secondary progression in a roundabout fashion. If we were in the key of E flat um, and we saw a B flat chord go to a C minor chord, that would be five going to six. So in a roundabout way, we're saying five going to six in terms of E flat. So that's what that's what makes it a secondary progression is that it does so via a secondary dominant. Very common in Bach. Or not very common, but we do see it with some frequency in Bach. So 2, 6, 5, we would expect to take it to 5, which it does. E flat, A, F, and F. It's an incomplete 5, 4, 2 chord, but a 5, 4, 2 chord nonetheless. We would expect this to resolve to 1, 6, which it does. D, B flat, F, and B flat. Then we have some uh, non-chord tones here, two passing tones and a neighbor tone. We have E flat, B flat, G, and C, which is uh, C minor over E flat, it's a 2 6 chord. That takes us not quite to 5, but to an accessory to 5. We have F, B flat, F, and D, which is 1 6 4. And we typically know that 1 6 4 will lead us to 5, which it does. F, A flat, or sorry, A natural, E flat, and C, which is 5 7. And we use a bracket to connect these two, at least the way that I learned to analyze. Um, anticipation here in the alto, and then we cadence on B flat. B flat, F, D, and B flat. Tonic triad, root position. And that is today's analysis. Very similar to yesterday's analysis. We had some modal ambiguity or some mode mixture going on, probably both. Um, we have this one, uh, sorry, four six to one progression without the connector, the connecting leading tone that we always expect. It's one of the things that's been really universally constant in Bach. And this is the first time I at least can recall it happening. So if it has happened in the past, it's been very infrequent, but usually we have that passing tone in between. And granted, we do have a passing tone in between the two chords, but it's just not in the voice that we would expect. We have our tonic functioning as five of four, not just as five of four, um, uh, in a context that uh, we would expect, um, but here we see Bach skipping 
the resolution to the tonic and seeing it immediately change its function to 5 of 4. So 5 resolving to 5 of 4, basically. Um, sometimes we see Bach go 5 to tonic and then tonic to 5 of 4. But here we see Bach, um, what is the word? Yeah, he, he hybridizes, he connects both of those, um, the the role of the tonic being 1 and the role of the tonic being 5 of 4 at the same time, hybridizes it. And uh, we also have a secondary deceptive progression here, 5 of 4 resolving to 2. It's a coincidence that it's also 5 of 4, but here we see it. And I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in today's chorale. Also, it's kind of interesting that we had uh, basically um, a variation on yesterday's chorale where we saw a slight reharmonization of what's happening here in what I would call a prime. Um, the third phrase, because in yesterday's crowd we had a repeat, so it's very similar, but um, slightly different. So visually, it's like we have two of the same phrases going on here, but not quite. There's a slight change in the bass um, and the, tenor, uh, the alto, coincidentally. But that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in today's analysis. If you're interested in following me along on the journey to analyze all the box crawl harmonizations, feel free to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification icon, and like the video if you enjoyed the content. Thank you so much for watching the video and supporting the channel by doing so. I look forward to tomorrow's analysis, and I hope you take care.